Welcome to Brain E-Course. Let us go ahead on the learning curve. Restless Leg Syndrome, in short, also called as RLS, came to light with the thesis presented by Swedish neurologist Carl Axel Ekbom. The other name for RLS is Willis Ekbom Syndrome. RLS is commonly referred to as the most common disorder you have never heard of. The symptoms of RLS are commonly neglected and undermined. But it is a condition which can significantly cause distress and negatively impact the overall quality of life. RLS is a common sensory motor disorder affecting about 5 to 15 percent of the general population. It commonly affects females and generally after 40 years. Restless leg syndrome is diagnosed by using the International Restless Leg Syndrome Study Group criteria. The four salient diagnostic features being 1. Urge to move limbs, commonly associated with premonitory sensory disturbances. 2. Motor restlessness. 3. Relief by activity. 4. Diurnal variation in the form of evening or night worsening of the symptoms. There is no clear cause for RLS. The two most common pathophysiological explanations or mechanisms attributed are 1. Dysregulation of dopamine transmission 2. Intracellular ion dysregulation This can be objectively substantiated by decreased CSF ferritin levels and decreased prohepsidin levels which is nothing but an intracellular regulatory protein for ion. The two common types of RLS described are 1. Primary RLS 2. Secondary RLS There are important differences between the two varieties of RLS. The primary RLS is known to happen in the younger that is less than 45 years of age individuals. It is most of the times slowly progressive and is commonly associated with a positive family history which commonly shows an autosomal dominant pattern of inheritance. The secondary RLS can be associated with multiple physiological states or comorbid medical illnesses. The common associated conditions are pregnancy, iron deficiency anemia, peripheral neuropathy, diabetes mellitus, Parkinson's disease, peripheral neuropathy, diabetes mellitus and many more conditions. Do have a look at the Brain eCourse material for a detailed list of associated conditions with RLS. There are drugs commonly used which can precipitate or worsen the RLS. Some of the common ones are tricyclic antidepressants, SSRIs, SNRIs, antipsychotics, antiemetics, centrally acting antihistaminics. While managing a case of RLS, it is important to note the following. The most important steps is to evaluate iron deficiency anemia and correct the same if necessary. Levodopa test is a useful diagnostic strategy to diagnose RLS in a challenging clinical scenario. Patients with symptoms of RLS with mild distress can be advised non-pharmacological methods in the form of active lifestyle, a good sleep hygiene, avoiding substances like alcohol, nicotine and caffeine. In patients with significant distress, there are multiple pharmacological strategies available like the opioids, benzodiazepines, antiepileptics, ergot alkaloids and many others. Out of all the drugs, dopaminergic agents have remained the mainstay for managing symptoms of RLS. Ergot alkaloids, even though known to have dopaminergic effect and helps in reduction of symptoms of RLS, is known to lead to a common adverse reaction in the form of fibrosis due to its action on 5-HT2B receptors, hence preferably avoid it. There are various FDA approved drugs and modalities for the treatment of RLS like ropinirole, tramipexole, transdermal, rotigotin, gabapentin, enacarbil which is the prodrug for gabapentin, relaxes pad which basically works on the counter stimulation principle for reduction of symptoms. Do be part of I Love Brains for further updates and discussions. Read through the Brain eCourse material for other topics.